Andrew Wallace is a journalist who's been following the trial in Tanzania. He's now back in Manchester in England, joins us now live to discuss this story in further detail. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, first off, how significant is this case and this sentence in uh, the history of uh, the tribunal for Rwanda? And what sort of reaction is the sentence getting back in Rwanda? Well, it's very significant. Uh, I slightly correct you there. It's the first time an international court has found a woman guilty of genocide and uh, rape uh, as a crime of, against humanity. Um, but it, it's highly significant. The Rwandan government were very anxious uh, that this so-called Butari trial, there were six um, uh, on, on trial here, and especially Pauline, this Minister of, of Women's and Family Affairs, uh, should get the toughest possible sentence for her uh, horrific role in what happened in her hometown of Butari. So, uh, uh, as you say, she's accused, among other, of, of organising uh, the rape of Tutsi women, mm. which is, you know, very unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, how prominent was a uh, women's role in this Rwandan genocide? Well, what makes the Rwandan genocide so appalling compared with other uh, such crimes is the, the role of women, where um, tens of thousands of women took part, not just uh, ministers. There is a, a Rwandan uh, minister, uh, the Minister of Justice, Agnes, who was uh, also found guilty of genocide by Rwandan courts, but there have been nuns convicted there have been nurses, there have been social workers, teachers, housewives, across the spectrum really. Um, the appalling sight of a grandmother instigating the murder of tiny babies uh, in Gitarama. Uh, it has a huge social impact and it has a social impact today obviously as Rwanda tries to come to terms with what happened.